there, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be doing a video about everything you need to know about Rare Beauty. I purchased these products from Sephora.com the day they launched and then paid a little bit of extra money to have them expedited shipped because I wanted to test them for as much time as possible. And I also really wanted to use them in different situations so I could really give you my most accurate experience and how I think these products will perform for you based on how they performed for me. So I took this really seriously, got my, my notes <laughs> because this was, uh, you know, Selena Gomez's first makeup launch. So I really had a lot of things to say about these products. Um, and I know a lot of you are very curious about them. So I think it's very competitively priced, especially for a Sephora luxury upscale brand. Um, and you know, she's in the same store as Chanel, Dior, Tom Ford. So to be an upscale luxury brand, I think the prices are a very reasonable and fair price point. Um, I did want to say I paid around $140 for my order. A good chunk of that is from the expedited overnight shipping fee. But overall, I wasn't I didn't see as much sticker shock as I was expecting to see with the products. Um, I was pleasantly surprised that her price point was significantly lower than I thought that it was going to be. So let's get started off with the foundation primer. This is the Rare Beauty Illuminating Base Primer. I initially wasn't going to pick this up and then last minute I threw it in my cart and I got the mini size because I figured you know what, it's a new primer, um, a new foundation and concealer. Perhaps the primer is meant to be used specifically with the foundation and concealer. And I will say, I do feel like this primer brings out good characteristics in the formulation of the foundation and the concealer as well. This is a illuminating primer. Um, it's very hydrating. It's quickly absorbed into the skin and it leaves you with a slightly glossy but very fresh and plump looking base if you do have more of a medium to deep skin tone something to take into consideration um, it can be a little bit silverish uh, overall i think that the shade of the strobe is quite flattering it seems to be a pretty universally flattering pearl shade so I was pleasantly surprised by the shade of it. Um, and this is not a primer that is geared to increasing the longevity of your makeup. I really think it's just a primer that's going to make your makeup look nicer longer, but not stay on longer. It's not gonna you know, improve the wear time by any drastic difference, but it's just gonna make your skin really primed and looking its absolute best before you go in with foundation and concealer. The Liquid Touch Foundation was a big surprise for me because this is something I really wanted to emphasize is how uh, watery and fluid the formulation of this foundation is. It is easily the most fluid foundation I have ever come across. In fact, I would compare this fluidity of formulation to something like a Korean essence. Um, if you are familiar with the Glow Recipe Watermelon Juice Toner, this is maybe a little bit thicker than that, but not by much. Um, glides over the skin like a serum. Uh, very best of both worlds experience in my opinion because it's very lightweight and has a ton of pigment, so it doesn't look or feel like too much, but you will see that the coverage is extremely buildable all the way to full flawlessness. Um, and another thing that really surprised me about this foundation was the longevity. Um, I put this on at 3 p.m. last Friday, and then I didn't take it off until 1 a.m. Um, my brother, my boyfriend, and I all visited my grandparents, and we just spent the whole entire night talking with them all night and um, hanging out. And then uh, I came home at 1.30, looked in the mirror and was shocked at how good my base still looked. So the longevity power is definitely in this. But I do want you to keep in mind that I do have more of a normal to dry skin type. And I don't necessarily think that somebody who has an oilier skin type will get the same amount of longevity as someone with a less oilier complexion. I do think that because this is so lightweight, an oilier skin type would have to properly prep with a specific primer and set accordingly as well 
to get that great longevity out of it. Whereas I didn't use a long wear primer or a setting spray or even any powder at all. And I really got a lot of wear time out of it. So I did want to mention that if you do have more of a drier skin type, you would probably be just as surprised by longevity as I was. Now the shade I got is in 27N. I don't think it's a perfect match, but I did use the Sephora Shade Finder, and this is what they suggested based on the other shades I plugged in that I use. Um, I would prefer one of her warm undertone shades. I just could notice that uh, it wasn't matching up in certain areas of my face, but I made it work with bronzer. <laughs> Next is the Liquid Touch Concealer in the shade 240W, which I'm very impressed with. Um, I really, really like this shade. It's got a really nice warm yellow undertone that I think is super flattering on my skin. Um, and something I did want to mention is I do feel like the concealer has a lot of formulation similarities to the foundation in that being um, it's very lightweight, very fluid, but slightly thicker than the foundation. Um, it definitely has a little bit more of a whipped moussey formula in my opinion. Um, it's just quite uh, airy and light. It's got this lightness to it that I really do like, but it still has really great coverage and buildability. Um, and then I also really like how it just doesn't feel heavy. I do wear quite a decent amount of concealer under my eyes because I just really like that, you know, bright looking under eye. And I don't feel like this feels gooey or sticky or too heavy. I don't notice a ton of migration. If anything, if I'm being extra expressive with my face and, you know, I'm crunching my forehead and crunching my eyes, I will notice the concealer has the tendency to sometimes settle into those areas, but it's nothing bad. And it's like, literally if that happens, I'll just take my fingers, go like this, and then it's completely back to normal. So overall, I do really like the concealer, but just something to keep in mind is that if you are somebody who likes something that's slightly more thick and creamy, I don't think this is gonna be the one for you because as I said, light, fluid, slightly moussey, almost, Kind of like a cool whip texture do you know what i'm trying to say i don't know if that sounds crazy but it's not in the same family as a lot of other under eye concealers i typically go for it's just it's a nice switch up unfortunately i don't have a highlight to review for you because i swear i thought that i put it in my cart but when i opened the box it wasn't in there and then even on the little order slip it wasn't on my order slip, so I must have just not hit add to basket, so I do apologize for that. But I do have the Dewy Finish Blush in Happy, and I'm actually really impressed with this. I'm not typically a uh, big fan of like pink colored blushes. I'm not, I don't typically gravitate towards them, but this is a cool toned pink. That really surprised me. I really like the shade. As many of you do know, if you've watched my videos, I am also a big fan of cream and liquid blushes. I just think they look really natural. And something I did want to really make sure you know is that this is so, so pigmented. Uh, really just one dot is all you need on each cheek. If you do watch Selena's tutorial, she only does one um, and it gives you so much coverage. If you really do like more of a punchy, brighter, stronger looking blush, then I would say two dots. Um, but definitely start off with one, blend it out, see how you like it. And then from then on, you can add more accordingly. Um, I also did want to mention that I think this is really pretty on the lips. I really like this as like a little bit of a blotted lip moment. So it's very pretty on cheeks and lips. And um, once it sets down, it's got you know, normal wear time. I also really like the formula of this. I didn't notice any lifting in terms of foundation when I applied it on top. So the last two products that I purchased are lip products. The first one is the Dewy Lip Balm in Appreciate. I don't like this. <laughs> it's not really the formula that I don't like. It's the shade. This is so not flattering on me. It makes me look dead, first of all. It's like the shade of a rock from landscaping. You know what I mean? Like I thought it was going to be a little bit more of a sheer, really glossy, cool toned brown. And it just looked really flattering on the swatches online. But then when I put it on my lips, I'm like, no, it just, it doesn't work for me. 
I also really would not consider that sheer. To me, that's a pretty full on lipstick. Like I was just under the impression that it was gonna be more like this. So this is the balm mixed with some lip balm. So obviously I can do that easily, but I just really do not like the way it looks on me when it's like that. It just wasn't flattering, but I'm down for it when it's sheared out. And then the Lip Souffle, and this one is in Inspire, which is a really nice, um, almost like candy apple matte red. This was actually really surprising to me because it's not as, I mean, obviously you can see it on my lips right now. It's got a full coverage moment going right now, but it does look really nice as just a blotted lip. I really like that appearance with these and they're very easy to work with because this isn't as full on intense as I thought that it was gonna be. You can still see a little bit of my skin peeking out from behind the swatch, even the fullest coverage area. So I actually really like that. It's a little bit more unique. And especially if you are somebody who wants something that you can just be left with a little bit of a stain once you've applied a little bit of the product, I think you'd really like it. The most unique thing about the Lip Souffle is that it does not dry down, or at least mine doesn't. Um, it still stays slippery on my lips, so it's extremely comfortable. If you are familiar with liquid lipsticks, they typically dry down, become rock solid. Um, they're kind of uncomfortable as well, but it feels more like something you would get from a bullet than something that you would get from the wand applicator and that's another thing i did want to mention the paddle on this is really nice it's actually more rectangular shaped so there is a completely flat edge on the end which is great for guiding along your lips um, to ensure that you're getting as crisp of a line on the outer parts of your lip as you possibly can so that is everything i tried from the rare beauty line that's everything that I personally wanted to try. And um, I also know that there were a couple products that I skipped out on, such as the setting mist and the brow pencil and stuff. But those just aren't like products that I'm super crazy about to begin with. So I wouldn't really have an opinion that would be here nor there for you. I really just wanted to purchase things that I knew that I would use in everyday life. If you do have any questions, please feel free to hit me up in the comments down below. I'm gonna list and link all of these products for you as well. Um, but other than that, I think that's everything I wanted to say. So if there are any thoughts, comments, concerns, I'll see you in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and requesting this video. Bye.